You are listening to the Hiking Radio Network, where we talk the walk with shows by hikers about hikers for everybody. This is the Hammock Hangers Podcast, where we hang out and talk about everything from hammocks and hammock camping to the group hangs from around the country. Hey y'all, hammock enthusiasts and chill seekers, welcome to the Hammock Hangers Podcast, the coziest spot on the pod waves. We are your go-to source for all things hammock related, from laid back tales to tips and tricks on finding that perfect hang. So grab yourself a drink, kick back in your favorite hammock, and let's swing into some awesome conversations. This is where relaxation meets conversation, and it's going to be one comfy ride. So let's get into it. Well, everyone, uh, as you probably have figured out, HangCon is over. Uh, HangCon was an amazing event this year. And uh, today we have um, a few of our crew uh, that are here with us. We have uh, Skunk Ape. Woohoo! What's we up, have everybody? Brit. Hey, everybody. And we've got our Firemaster, Florida Hanger. Hello there. So this week we're we're just gonna kind of have a debrief on uh, HangCon and uh, kind of what what our takebacks off um, from it, and just go into how we thought the event was run uh, and uh, what we're looking forward to uh, going into next year, and um, just some of our experience. So uh, uh, welcome everyone, and uh, we're we're glad to have you guys all. Hey, I think I was talking about. You know, our opinion of how it was run is going to be a little biased here. Oh, well, you know, uh, just not saying. Me. Not me. I can judge the two of you perfectly well. Oh, we, I mean, judge, so- you, we judge you several episodes a, no, you I know. Know, a month That's why I'm least. here now to fight back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, the there, were, there the were definitely some things that, uh, that, that went super smoothly, and there was definitely some things that, you know, I could look back and go, yeah, we're never doing that again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same. But I think for me, like my biggest stress uh, coming into the event never happened. That's always a plus. And I'm the. Oh, oh, yeah. It's it's funny because I was the one that had the the stress this time. All right. So this year, it was not the money. Like the money was fine, it was not the food, it was the weather. Like my biggest stress was thinking, oh, we are going to have you know, hundreds and hundreds of people in Dagobah, uh, the swamp land in our parking area, just because originally, if you looked at the forecast, it was supposed to start raining on Thursday night and not stop until Saturday morning. Yeah. And I was truly, truly dreading that. But luckily enough, we all were. We, oh my goodness. It was, <laughs> I, I was, I was sweating and it wasn't the rain. It was, it was sweat. <laughs> But I think we we only got rain like at night. It, even if it was during the day, it was just like you know a, a squirrel taking a leak or something like that. But because it never really came down, uh, and even on Monday, because I was also really dreading uh, packing up in the rain like we were supposed to have, but it never happened. And so that those were good solutions to uh, unforeseen problems. I totally agree. Yeah, I was I was dreading the the rain as well, um, but and, and it's funny because we have everybody out, you know always sending us messages asking us, you know what the weather's like and everything else. And we always tell them, you know, it, it's it's Florida, you know, it's Florida. <laughs> but then we see the rain and we start stressing. We need to take our own advice on that because we know how Florida it was, is. It was so funny when I was watching uh, Carla with a K's video. She she talked about this and how Florida weather is really weird and uh-huh. um and even <laughs> yeah. from someone from like wisconsin it's 60 degrees in wisconsin you've got shorts and uh-huh. you know, flip-flops and this that, and the other but a florida 60 degrees it's cold well yeah because you got it's, wind. it's 60 degrees with a little bit of wind and still you have all the humidity i mean it's 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 a wet damp cuts you yeah. cuts you to the bone and it's overcast so you don't have the sun beaming down on you right mm-hmm yeah welcome welcome to the sunshine state (laughs) (laughs) so um 
so I, I'd like to kind of start with going um so what are some things this year that you so all of us are very very seasoned uh Hankonians. Uh, so w- what was something maybe new this year that you either saw or people that you saw or s- experience that you experienced this year that even us as veterans had not experienced in the past? Um, I'll, I'll go first with this one. The number of hammock stands this year yeah. was, there were so many hammock stands this year and it like, it, it kind of, some people had their own, some people had, had bought some, um, but there was just a lot of people that were taking advantage of not having to go find trees or making sure that the, they got a couple trees for some people, but then they had a, several stands near them as well. So they could just have more of their people together. Uh, I think which that's is, always which cool. Is, cause, right. Exact, part of Which is good. I yeah. mean, because that's what we told people anyhow, was to, to make sure they brought stands because of the amount of people that we were going to have. So. Along the lines with that, um, I, me personally, I'd much rather hang from trees. I really would. However, um, I, I think all of us were there um, on Wednesday night, which was just like a, a, a an us group, and also Sunday night because we were expecting rain on Monday morning. We saw so many cricket and hive stands under the pavilion <laughs> like it was like, like a big no party one, i felt yeah, like no i one, out having to walk back to my trees but everybody all the all the cool people underneath the uh under, underneath the big pavilion the, the well, only one one crazy to that. guy that had the turtle dog stand in there as well that was me i i mean but but just the the luxury of that having the ability to say, no, I don't want to pack up a wet tarp. So I'm just going to take the stand and set up under this pavilion and be golden. And it, it, it was nice. The only downside to that to though, that not too many people experienced. So um, I, I was walking back to my hammock that was on my hive stand under the pavilion, probably around 2 a.m. Uh, <laughs> Sunday night. Sweet fancy Moses. It sounded like a sawmill festival going on <laughs> under there. I have never heard so much noise in one location. <laughs> and just the acoustics of the, the pavilion. I remember laying in my hammock and just not not blinking, just going, Dear Lord, I am not gonna fall asleep to this. And now but you I, know how was, everybody felt sleeping near you. Yeah, that, that's also so true. many years. <laughs> Luckily, I only heard it for about ten seconds before I passed out. <laughs> See, I it didn't, didn't affect me as much as I thought it would, but I didn't hear it at all because I had, I had ended up uh, packing up all of my gear, and so I didn't even put up a stand up under there. But I remembered seeing in the back room a uh, bunk bed, yeah. so I just went and laid down in that bunk bed <laughs> back in the back with the door shut. <laughs> So I was nice and quiet and dark and it was nice. Yeah, that that was something that I was that I was interested to see how many people would bring stands because when we went to Fall Sprawl, that was something else that um I I was kind of impressed with. Just the number of stands, a lot of stands. that were there in a location that you didn't need a stand. Like there yeah. is an abundance of trees there. So all the stands. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, that's a that's a testament to you know what Cal and Kristen have done. Just um, their design, you know, being self self standing and self sufficient, not needing any anchors. I think that's a huge, huge benefit to the the Yobo stands. Exactly. So, so Paul, what about you? What, yeah. What's something new that you you saw this year? Uh, a little extra sleep. For me, because I didn't have to stay up <laughs> and cook the pork this year. <laughs> so wake up, so wait, not wake up, but I would just stay up on uh, Friday night because like everything kind of winds down at ten eleven, and that's about the time you're trying to get the fires going to ten or eleven. But the party's yeah. starting. Okay, well, <laughs> for some people that had to go, <laughs> like those years that Paul had, that like what four or five different smokers 
like out back before we it had was it was nuts dude I, I would i would start smoking you know what friday friday well yeah friday at like midnight most of the time something close. yeah usually usually 12 12 one o'clock yeah and be up all night and all day tending to the smoker so i did get to actually sleep this year which was was nice didn't have to worry about that. I think my average time going to bed this year was three o'clock in the morning. Really? Mm-hmm. I tried. St- I tried staying up a little later on some nights, but I think it was three thirty. I, I mean, I'm usually a night owl anyway. So I, now I thought I, that I would be like eleven o'clock done, and my body said at eleven o'clock you should be done. <laughs> but it was like one or two o'clock every single night that I'm just still wandering around talking to people and, you know, saying, Hey, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool. Well, what about you? Want what's something? Oh my gosh. It it's in, well, I think it's on that, on that kind of note, uh, one of the things that I noticed this year, um, more so than any other year is usually while we're doing the raffle, after doing as much as walking and around as we have to do, well, at this point, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, my feet were done. I am not walking around. I am not standing at the raffle. Just put me in a chair. Just make me look at least somewhat decent. But this year, like I still was, I I was still going around checking tickets and I was still going and moving and I I didn't feel my feet hardly at all. So that that was a big uh, difference for me, but definitely a lot more energy. Right. What about you, Juan? Well, for me, I would have to say probably the amount of vendors and vendor row was just tremendous. I didn't even get a chance to see all of them. There was a lot this year. We can call it vendor row. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Next year, we had some some uh, vendors ask me for doing a little bit of a little extra in the fire for them and also oh, yeah. trying to get them around the corner. Some of the vendors around the corner to where like sugar lands likes, likes to be. So I'll be marking gotcha. some of those areas off next year for them. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's one thing that, that will happen next year is uh, marking areas off. So there's a little more organization to the, the vendor row and everything. So, but yeah, like I, I, I'll agree. Like I didn't, I didn't get to have like the types of conversations that I would have liked to have, you know, with specific vendors, I, two in particular. I, I love Superior Gear. I love Danny Warnock to death. I, he's uh-huh. a super great guy. I said hi to him. And the next thing that I know, someone told me he was on a plane back to us or yeah. back to the Great White think- North. And I was like, oh, I didn't get to say talk to him hardly at all. <laughs> I think I only saw him like one time. Myself, or, to be honest um, with you. Or Bill from Ridge Outdoors. Um, yep. He just kind of like appeared, which I mean, Bill usually does. Um, but I think I got to say hi to him once. And next thing that I know, he, they were gone as well. So, I mean, I know uh, uh, Red Paw Packs, Matthew, he was there. I've never even met him. I've just talked to him, you know, through email and everything. I didn't even get a chance to go see go see him. I mean, there was there was a few that that I didn't get to really talk to. But. Yeah, with Danny, normally I'm with him at the fire pit late for the night. Didn't get to see him this year, and of course Sam from Batchdoos wasn't there, so that was sad. Right. Yeah, we definitely miss Sam this year. Definitely miss Sam. But luckily, we know why he wasn't there. We, we're not like sitting on a rescue mission like we were a few years ago. <laughs> right. We love you, Sam. That's why like, we, we were really worried when you did show up a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you got worried. So, so for me for me this year, like the thing that was new um, was just – Man, so, so much stuff, but I, I love seeing um, just the camaraderie amongst the vendors. Yeah. Um, uh, and I was talking to him earlier today. Uh, Chad from UGQ and Adam from Hammock Gear. 
that was just hilarious back dude. and forth oh man they were a hoot that they was hilarious were a hoot. that video and, little podcast video did they yeah. freaking hilarious um, and uh I, I guess for me like the the coolest thing um that was new was we had not not just one or two we had a number of international guests oh yeah yep. uh, that was that that was great like and i've said it before people had to acquire passports and again as i was telling our our, our uh, friends from denmark this seems like a very american thing to say but people had to acquire passports to come to this event right. and um that's that's just this is really cool did y'all want to say the so- bitters that laura's brought uh, we did. We did. Oh. It was. Uh, it. It was different. It was different. The way I describe it is that uh, it was so disgusting that I liked it. <laughs> some people say that about some of the scotch that I like too. But so just the camaraderie and just some of the new vendors that um, that we haven't seen in the past. Um, uh, uh, that the hang 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 tight. Uh, or, yeah. Uh, those guys, uh, Steve Hazel, uh, coming in for the first time. Um, re- really good to talk with him. Um, see, well, I mean, we we I have met the the former owners of UGQ, but I had never met Chad and his family before. Um, seeing right. them were, was awesome. Um, so definitely like new vendors and new people. Um, and, but I have to say, um, my favorite people that I saw this year that their presence truly um warmed my heart was the uh the family from uh south carolina um and i'll I'll just go into a little of that they they had went to the palmetto state uh palmetto camp oh yes in, in south carolina and they were just intrigued by hammock camping and they were invited to come out to fall sprawl and they, they didn't camp. They just kind of attended the event. Uh, they were introduced and they were welcomed with open arms. Um, just that's the way Palmetto State just does. Uh, they're, they're and then the beginner's them. luck at the raffle was amazing. Oh, man, they cleaned up. They cleaned <laughs> up at the raffle. Um, after the, the raffle in the fall sprawl, I, I chatted with them and said, hey, we, we run this little hang down in Florida. We would love for you guys to come down. And that they were really interested. And, you know, I... I I, they were being bombarded with a lot of different people welcoming and on. So I, I didn't know if, you know, they would remember the conversation, if it would come to fruition, but um, they registered and I got super excited. And then they actually um, came to the event as well. And I, and I got to talk with them and they just had a blast and they, they truly did have a blast. I, I, I really hope that we can get them on the podcast and just, just talk about their experience and uh, you know, a little bit more of their story. Um, but it was super cool to see them. Um, so right. beyond anything else, uh, seeing, seeing. Yeah, them I think there. this was their. I think HangCon was their second hang because their first was was Palmetto State's Falls for All. Yeah, so they they came. Mm-hmm. Well, but HangCon was their very first time sleeping in a hammock, um, at, at a hang. Uh, so, and you know that and happens you know a lot at HangCon. Yeah, but. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to go in because it's not really my story to uh, to share. But right, 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 right. If, if you know, if, if you know a little bit more about them, the fact that they were there and the fact that they had so much fun, um, it it truly is. It, it's a it's a very heartwarming experience. Like I, I get kind of right uh, a little bit dusty eyed, you know, just thinking about it. But it, it that was really really cool, and it kind of brought to it was kind of one of those situations where I go to. This is why we do this. This is right. why we do this. I've seen them several times throughout the weekend, and they were just having a blast the whole time. Yep. Yep, that they were. So, uh, yeah, a few more. I'm going to double back for a second, AJ, when you were talking about some of the, the vendors and stuff like that, like the new vendors that we had there. Um, I mean, we had several new vendors that actually showed up. Um Corey Bleeker from Majestic Hammocks, which mm-hmm. Britt, you ended up getting one of his uh, hammocks. I know I I've got one. Almost that's... immediately bought one after. Yeah, I'm fixing it. to be ordering one too. That's the the comfort of his hammocks is just freaking insane. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, it was, I, well, Annette. I mean, 
I'm not a I small went guy. From a, and, <laughs> right. I mean, like I, a comfortable hammock is it like it has been a little tough to find, um, in some ways, and also feel supported and stuff like that. And uh, right. You know, I went. I went to a, a bridge hammock to get the the flatter mm-hmm. lay and stuff like that without having to use like a twelve foot hammock or whatever. But I, I don't know what he does. It's like magic or something. I don't know. So I'm gonna be getting one myself here soon. <laughs> well, I was um, there with yeah, him. He was also well, and I, I I I gotta say, like, I all props to him as like a creator and and stuff like that, and being like he was just genuinely excited to talk about what he did right and he's just super proud of it and which he should be well he should be um and i i just i it's always it's always fun to interact it's one of the other things i love about hankon it's like it's so fun to interact with people who are making these these things and are bringing products to what is really a niche kind of market right um but they're, you know, and they're just excited and passionate about it and want to, um, well, that's know, the, want to the, help and make things better and share and, and so right. On. And I mean, that's you know, that's the neat thing about HangCon itself is since we do have all these vendors that bring their gear and stuff like that, you can try it out because, I mean, until I tried laid down in one of his hammocks and tried it out. It was just a gathered in hammock. Mm-hmm. I hear <laughs> you. You know what I'm saying? To you and you were like, "No, go lay in one." I was like, "Look, come on, it can't be that special." I mean, I've laid a lot of different gathered in hammocks, right? And so when you're like, "No, seriously, go lay, go lay in, in one it. and tell me that I'm wrong," and then I did, and then a few minutes later, I was buying one. So. And and what's even funnier is, I mean, the one that I laid in that I was comfortable in, which I mean, I'm I'm whenever I buy one, I'm going to get the 11 foot. But even the ten and a half foot was comfortable. Well, that's what I think. That's what sold me is, well, first off, just looking at the ten and a half foot one, I couldn't tell it was ten and a half feet. Right. It looked, it laid, it set like it was an eleven foot. Yeah. And then I got in it, and it felt like a twelve foot. Right. Like because it, it was so comfortable and so squished, and, was so, and I'm like. And then I'm like, I'm laying there going like, this is not a ten and a half foot hammock. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Bundled. There's no ridge. There's no nothing. Yeah. I didn't have to shift. So it was just... yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's magic or something, I guess. I was there when uh, you were testing so, it out in the evening and man, it was amazing yeah. watching him talk to you about it and the passion he had. And I think yeah. him talking to you and you doing all the motions you did in the hammock to test it out, you probably helped him sell three or four extras as well. <laughs> I, I, might I mean, that. You know him, him and his dad both were, were awesome. Oh yeah, I, I, I loved meeting both of them. But um, I mean, and even um, uh, Adam, Adam Hurst from Hammock Gear, he said that he hadn't set up a booth mm-hmm. since. I mean, I think he said the last time that he ever set up a, a booth with gear, you know, with product to sell and stuff like that was at Trail Days. Like umpteen like years ago. <laughs> yeah, this is his first Hang Kong. Something, something like that. That's the first time he set up as a vendor at Hang Kong before. Right. Um, we had a couple of other, you know, new uh, uh, vendors there. We had Cameron Joyce from SOL Hammocks, which is Slice of Life Hammocks. Um, of course, Chad from UGQ. Uh, who else do we have? That would have been new. Chris Wooten from Heavy Threads. Um uh, Dave Jansen, the Adventure Source. He he actually contacted me actually uh on what day was I what day did I head over there? Like Tuesday? Monday? Yeah, Monday. Monday. So he had con he had contacted me on Monday whenever I was heading over to start getting things set up and everything. And uh he just he was really just trying to find out information about Hong Kong because he had just heard about it and was, you know, interested about being a vendor for 2025. And I didn't know where he was from or anything at the time. And I told him, I said, well, if you want to, you know, come this year, you can, you know, we'd love to have you. He showed up and he was all the way, he, he was coming from, uh, from Texas, middle of Texas. So, um, Let's see. Who else do we have here? Uh, Ultralight rain gear. Ultralight I think it's called gear. trail gears. Or... Oh, lightheart gear. 
Lightheart. Gear, oh, Lightheart. Sorry. Yeah, Lightheart. Yep, Lightheart was Where there. Where are you right now? <laughs> um, <laughs> a little warm for well, us. I had to like relocate. Especially that one. That one is well, really I had warm. To relocate to the uh, the back porch, so uh, it's a, it's a little chilly. So um, I, I put on my hoodie. Yeah. So so it might sound a little better maybe, now because we don't have all the background noise. I'm sure I'll figure out some um, to uh, disrupt the audio. I'm sure you will. Uh, we had Crankworks uh, bikes, bicycles there. I think they they done a demo yeah. and everything, and then uh, didn't they lead a, a like a bike trek? Well, also? they had a, they had um, they had one. I know they had planned on it, but I, unfortunately, I, I... yeah, unfortunately, uh, his his family caught a little bit of food poisoning the the day before or on like Friday. Um, yes, not, not Hang from Hangon. I would have proven that they did <laughs> not say that. Not from Hangon. I, I was like, I was surprised it took you that long to say anything. <laughs> I was like, wait, I know that wasn't from Hangon. So, uh, why are we not, now, now that we're kind of uh, uh, on that, I, I have a funny story uh, that I'll share. A lot of you guys know. Um, so, one of the nights that we do uh, dinner, we do white chicken chili. Uh, and I get this phone call from Travis while I'm out wandering around doing something. And he's like, where are the chilies for the white chicken chili? And I'm like, um, I, I know we bought them. I remember personally taking them off and putting them on the cart. I know we bought chilies um, because we bought them back in December when we were, you know, doing some pre-purchasing. It's like, I know that we bought them. Like I, I physically remember picking up the cans. He's like, they're not here. So we go running. Uh, I go running over there and scrambling through all this canned stuff that we had bought. And like, there's no chilies. However, there are Chipotle chilies in adobo sauce. So apparently that's what I had bought, not the green chilies that we had. So um, so like that, that's fine. Good we'll, job. We'll just use that. It works. However, when you use uh, chili and adobo sauce and not green chilies, your white chicken chili does not turn white, and pink chicken chili did not exactly have the same chili. Uh, appetizing <laughs> ring. Uh, so I just told to tell people we we were serving salmonella chowder. So there you go, salmonella, salmonella chowder. chowder. <laughs> so so what? Okay, so we had pink chicken chili this year. Last year we had uh, what was it? Breakfast chili. Oh yeah, because yeah, the oatmeal chili. with the raisins. Everybody, everybody <laughs> loved breakfast chili. Everybody loved that. <laughs> Look just like look just like chili, but it was it was oatmeal with raisins in it, um, and the the raisins had changed the the color, which well the raisin the raisins was really funny. Kinda, they they weren't all together anymore. They just emulsified right. into the, 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 the <laughs> yes. Well, they stained a particular area of the of the the oatmeal. They like when you would they would just like not there. Yeah, that was funny. I don't remember oh, breakfast from last year at all because I was never awake for it. <laughs> yeah, that that's one of the greatest things. <laughs> about breakfast breakfast seems to three a.m. or four a.m. That's one of the greatest things about having breakfast the seems to go that quick. We have is of all the things that I know that I do well, there are also things that I realize that I do not do very well at all. And getting up for breakfast that's wake up early things. And my kitchen crew takes care of I'm that, so and they are wonderful. I'm surprised. I actually woke up uh, pretty much every day this year for breakfast. Usually, I sleep through it. The only, yeah, same here. The only thing that I wanted from breakfast that I did not get at all, ironically, I did not get a single serving of grits the entire weekend. Really? really? I don't know that I did either, to be honest with no. you. I got to say, the grits were good this year. Good deal. Good deal. <laughs> so, Three and a half hours of sleep, but I got grits. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so what are some things let me see what are some things that maybe each of y'all saw that we that we done differently this year than we have in the past that maybe we won't do again in the future or something we might I change know something I, it might be the same I, something I that something. I'm thinking of. <laughs> um, so, and I will fully what? take credit for this because this was me. And um, while, okay, while, yep. it's the same thing while that I'm it was about. happening, um, <laughs> well, in, in my mind, I thought, oh, this is going to be better. Um, this is going to be much 
much easier and it's going to do better. But as it was happening, I'm yeah, having a nervous yeah, anxiety yeah. attack because I'm just like, this was a mistake. Yeah. This was a mistake. Um, so this year, um, we changed our tier three in our raffle to just be like, I, we are raffling off this particular thing. Uh, and I thought it was going to go easier. And I immediately realized that it was a mistake that we will never do this ever. Yes. <laughs> nope. Thank this you, was thank a, a one-time <laughs> thing. Yes. It, so from here on out, it will be done the same way that we have always done it in the past. <laughs> well, and we, I mean, we're always trying to make the, uh, we're trying to speed up the raffle, it, it, trying to make it smoother, trying right. to make it like more interesting for people. Um, cause it can be tough to sit there for, and well, on this year, definitely tough to sit there because it was so cold that night. So if you're sitting there and the breeze would blow, you'd be like shivering next to people. Well, um, it was it was but, pretty interesting for the 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 one guy that was like six foot something that mm -hmm. won the 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 child size Quillo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. luckily somebody somebody did trade him from from what I heard, which worked out fine. But you have a, a, a guy that was like six four, something like that, that got a, a child sized squillow from UGQ. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think on the opposite side though, the tier one was a great idea of bundling things. That was awesome. Yeah. We're we're, yeah. we're constantly the, the raffle has definitely constantly it, it had to evolve. Um, because one of the amazing things about Hankon is just how utterly astronomical our raffle is well the size the downside yeah, is the size of it our raffle is astronomically big <laughs> so so yeah i mean there's there's a lot of aspects about hankon as a whole that each year we have to to change things or rework things get rid of things add things whatever to to make it try and make it better for the next year because it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And the more people you add to something, you can't keep the same, same guidelines is right. yeah. before. I but mean, I, and, yeah, I know we talked about this a couple of times, skunk is that we like, we'll, we'll do these little conversations or have, you know, have a hang and just hang out and chat, you know, try and think about things and brainstorm. And we often end up solving a lot of the problems from the year before. Yeah. And then as the new HangCon goes, we discover new problems that yep. we didn't know were a problem or were going to be a problem. Um, now, what's what's funny, though, is the problem solve mode. Yeah. there's there's a lot of people, though, that I mean, every time we change something, of course, you know, change people. A lot of people don't like change. And every, every year there's always, we always get somebody, sometimes several people that will complain about something or, or make a comment about something. I, I don't know how many times this year, and I, I don't know where they were getting this from, but I don't know how many times this year, the two main things that I heard was, well, that car is parked over there. Why can't I park here? Well, because I haven't got to them yet to tell them to move the car first off. <laughs> Uh, or, or the other one was, well, I was here a few years back and I was able to park near my car. Well, no, you've never been able to, even when Timber and Gumbo had it, you know, was, was the organizers. You never parked next to your, your, your camp spot. There was always a designated parking spot. So if they did park near their, their camp, they weren't supposed to, Yeah, I think, that's you know, also like but it's, one of the it's things also really, um, is a blessing and a curse at the same time, especially for people that go to other hangs around the country. Um, you know, hang con is different. Um, you know, what, it is. what works and what works well at a hang with 30 people to 70 people does not work for a hang of just 300 people. Um, and it's right. just, like I, and I was talking with, um, I think it was Matt uh, a couple of days because I had just picked up some of my stuff that he had taken back home from me from Hancock like a couple of days ago. Uh, and I said, you know, we have a, a lot of these people that are coming in with like these great suggestions for hangs. Um, we're, we're beyond a, a hang size. And, you know, we, we had talked about this a lot this year that 
you know, even with, you know, over 400 people, this is going to be kind of a litmus test to see, hey, what we've sure. done in the last, you know, four years has really been good um, and has really worked well. Are those same policies and procedures still viable at 300, the same way at 300 people as they are for four, five, six, 700, right. 800 people? Because as we talked about, it's, I don't think, I don't see this event getting it's, any smaller. It's, it's not going to. No, it it won't. It won't. Especially if you but have I mean, another five year plan yeah. that I probably detest. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got one. I'll talk yeah, to you yeah, about yeah, it yeah. later. <laughs> I've been around I mean, since this... way back when, and I'll tell you one thing. Something that we've always strived from the very beginning is we want to look out over the trees and not see cars. That's what RV right. parks are for. We want to look out over there and see tarts, hammocks, things of that sort. Yep. Get the cars out of there. Yeah, and that's that's you know one thing that AJ and I was talking about you know earlier. Of course, we have you know some of the some of our guests that their vehicle is part of their their uh, shelter their system. Okay. Well, with that being said, you know this year we had the designated area for the RVs. Mm-hmm. Next year we're going to have designated area for RVs, and we're going to have a designator out near the RV area. For the the people that have the to have their vehicles, yeah, I mean that is a great idea. You know, I mean yeah. it's, you know, and it may not be the spot that they want, but it's something that we're gonna have to do. And I mean, it's you know, there's there's gonna be changes each each year that people don't like. And I mean, I I don't like change either, but if we don't make these changes you know, that we come across and see that are a, a potential or, or not even a potential, but are, you know, like a, a negative impact towards HangCon. If we don't make changes, it's just, it's the HangCon is not going to be a fun place to go at, at, at a certain point. Well, it's and a game of logistics. You want to make sure you have things where they belong correct. and where it looks good. Exactly. Well, I, don't, I mean, I, I also see it as like, it's a way to make sure that we're, doing our best to make sure everybody has as good an experience as possible. Correct. I mean, for Correct. some of the folks that we did allow to keep their car close was because, um, oh, by the way, they need the power from their car so they can breathe at night with their CPAP. Right. A CPAP like, right. Of or course, something like that. we're going to le- let somebody with who has a CPAP or somebody who uh, needs their car close by for something like Which... a medical reason. Those right, not, which like, those people we put up at the handicap area, right. which is up near the kitchen area, of course. Right. But um, yeah, so I mean, there's you know <clears throat> logistics that we're gonna have to swap around and you know make a few changes. And I'm sure it's gonna make some people mad, but but I think overall, um, the the feedback that I got from everybody was was overwhelmingly positive. Oh yeah, um, yeah. There's there's always more positive than there is negative, you know, um. And I you think know, also, like, once but, we kind of explain to people, you know, why we have these certain procedures, is, is it annoying that we make everybody park their car on the parking lot? Yeah, it is. I remember my very, sure. back when we were at Doe Lake, I remember my very first time coming to Hancon. in my head, I was thinking, oh, this is car camping. I'm going to I pull my car right. and I'm going to set up right outside my car. And guess what? I packed according to that image that i had in my head when in reality yep. as one knows i was out i was beyond the fence and I, you were in B- yeah, bfe I was, for sure. I was <laughs> not anywhere remotely close but again this was that was my first time and that was just what i envisioned um right so the following year i had an idea it's like oh well I'm not going to necessarily be at my car or I'm going to show up a day earlier so I can make sure that I get um, the site that uh, or a spot closer to the action or a spot closer to the right. parking lot. I, I just make, but adjustments. still show up on t- on schedule time. You live and yeah. learn. But how not cool early. Is how cool is it that you still get to take your car? You still get to unload from your car right at your site. Then just go park. If you can, I mean, yeah. right. it's pretty cool that we still do that. Yeah. Right. You can't, uh, I, the, 
if they're in the primitive area, they can't go up in the primitive area just because of how not drive up there. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, and also uh, as an addition, not supposed to, to park up there along the road. The middle either, of nowhere. <laughs> um, I did not realize, like I've, I've been, we've been camping at there for so long. I didn't realize just how far back, how far area. back it went. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There were people like, it took us like me and you were on a golf cart driving around up in there. I think that's the us, only reason we know how far yeah, back it goes. Far, there's no way I would have walked up. all that. I didn't, to, I didn't want to go on a hike to find out. But, and then, and there were people way, I mean, way back. Yeah. Like, yeah, they, they wanted the seclusion and they got it. And they, yeah. You know? And I, like, I never would have thought that you could come to hang con with, as many people registered we had and still find a way to be pretty much secluded. Well, yeah, the underbrush there's, has there's... been cleared out. So that makes it easier from the first time we were there. Yeah. Yeah. Brent and I was talking also, and uh, we've talked to, to Tammy and, and uh, Jason and stuff. And uh, I think I know myself, anyhow, at some point we'll go out there and uh, spend a weekend camping but while I'm back in the back or while I'm there, go back in the back and cut down a little more of the, the undergrowth because there was several, several of the spots that already had cleared out that still had a couple of trees, you know, what they had cleared out would have been right. good for a tent or something like that. Right. But, you know, just past where they cleared, there's two perfect trees, but it has, you know, some, some undergrowth. I'm going to go out there and clear it up some and, you know, make it where there's more even more hammock spaces available different so areas while, while we're talking about the camp i i just kind of want to give a shout out to also um the, the wonderful organization that runs um the floor sands music ranch um they took over the camp uh they just celebrated their one year of ownership with the camp uh and that's the the will mclean yeah. uh foundation uh it's a nonprofit organization run in florida um, that was uh, founded as a way to uh, celebrate uh, Florida folk music. And uh, for most of the year, uh, the camp is used as a music venue and they run a lot of different music festivals uh, there. And they, they have so graciously allowed us to continue having HangCon there. And, you know, we, we do, I, I love the relationship that we have with them. Uh, it is even yes. immensely better than even our relationship with Sir Toma, the, the uh, former uh, owners, uh, which, which was never bad. Um, however, just the relationship and the support that we have gotten uh, from um, uh, Cynthia and uh, Doug Spears and uh, Ken, Ken and, and yeah. uh, that organization has just been um, amazing. Um, so I, I, w- I want to give a shout out to the Will McLean Foundation. If you're in the state of Florida and you're looking for some really awesome uh, music festivals to go to, uh, check out the Will McLean Foundation. Uh, they, they do a few different festivals themselves. There's a lot of music festivals that happen at Florida Sands Music Ranch. Um, and I kind of also want to give a big shout out to uh, <clears throat> uh, the new camp host uh, for Sertoma, Tammy and Jason. Uh, they, they're actually Red and Joy's uh, son and daughter-in-law. Um, uh, while Red and Joy, they've kind of uh, moved into retirement and uh, hopefully enjoying not doing and being as busy as much. Um, I definitely still saw Red uh, riding around and doing trash, but he, he assured me that he enjoys doing it. So, um, But they kind of are, are taking a back seat, and uh, Tammy and Jason are t- taking over there. And I, I just really love the relationship that we have with them as well. And uh, so, absolutely. Uh, and part of the conversations that we had with them uh, on ways that HangCon could help uh, beautify and support and uh, kind of upgrade their facility was to add more um, options for hammocks. So they had talked about maybe developing yeah. some hammock camping specific areas um, and something uh, along those lines based on hammocks. So uh, we appreciate your relationship and we appreciate you uh, maybe coming to the, coming to the elevated life as well, uh, as far as the hammocks go. So <laughs> yeah, it, it's, they're, they're, they're great people. And Will McLean Foundation is a great organization as well. So thank you guys. Yeah, thank thank you. you very much also for the quality of the firewood they had. It was amazing. So much better than we did had. You, did past. you like it a little better this year? I loved it. 
That, that's what I want every year from now on. Uh, I think we'll we'll have that. Yeah, as long as you want so. me to build fires for you, I want their firewood. That'll so work. while while we're giving uh, thank thank yous and things like that, there, there's a few different um, people um, that I kind of want to give a, a shout out to. Uh, first, I'm going to start with you, Juan. Uh, the the fires this year were incredible. Um, I know the the few videos that I've seen of people that have posted videos for from Hankon. Uh, your fires seem to be a, a a focal point of a lot of their their shots, especially the the monstrosity of an elevated uh, setup that you set up on Saturday night. I thought was crazy cool. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything yeah. quite that elaborate. It looked like a Lego set just on fire. It was awesome. <laughs> uh, it was my floating <laughs> stack. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, I had fun building it, and my son helped me to gather all the perfect wood just so I can make these stacks really tall. So we, we really, really appreciate uh, that, that work and your passion into uh, lighting things on fire and, and keep it everybody warm because, <laughs> because we definitely needed a few well, of the nights. So I tell you what, I honestly, the reason why I like to do it so much is so people don't have to, because if they can just sit down, come to Hong Kong and enjoy themselves, that's what, that's how I get paid. So that's awesome. So we, we appreciate that. Um, I also want to thank um, the people that we had at registration. Um, you guys, um, not not only just registration, uh, but also at the gatehouse. Uh, I, I know he couldn't come tonight uh, to record with us, but uh, uh, Mike or L Little Ricky, uh, you, you were awesome. You were you were up there being people's first uh, contact uh, when they came into the park and kind of guiding them where that to go. That was uh, Im immense help. Uh, to registration this year. Um, also, thank you to all the people that, that volunteered uh, to help run registration. Uh, you know, Matt, uh, my wife, and uh, my father-in-law, uh, Trip Smith. He came and uh, did like a a, a three-hour jaunt on on Thursday, uh, helping people get registered. Um, and I, I'm sure there's uh, we had a volunteer uh, from uh, Florida Florida Sands Music Camp. Uh, he came and helped out. Uh, for Thursday and Friday, uh, he's also a hammock camper, and he he was super enthused uh, about helping out, and he was a a, a great asset to um, Hank Con. Uh, that that registration table is just so important, and the the people that we have running that are so important that they are really the the first main contact for everything that we do there, and they did such an amazing amazing job. Um, another uh person or and team that I that I want to give a huge shout out to. Uh and I, I have no problem saying this. Um I've been to a lot of hangs um just in different parts of the country and um you know I've talked to people that have gone to different hangs and I can and I can have no problem making this claim. I have the best kitchen staff in hang world. Like yes. uh, our kitchen our kitchen staff um <laughs> is hands down the best crew um, that I have seen at not just hammock hanging events, but uh, any events where they are they are uh, providing food, they are providing um, a very flavorful uh, meals, um, and they're providing great you know customer interaction um, uh, along with it, and they do it so utterly selfish selflessly. Um, that and that's something that a lot of people don't get to see, but they're they're in there, they're having fun, but they're they're in there almost all day throughout the event, um, and pretty much they get less they sleep get less than anybody. Than anybody. I mean, they, they work they, harder than they're usually up at and the in the kitchen, at, and they're, they're up and in the kitchen at four a.m. in the morning to start, you know, getting stuff ready for breakfast, morning, getting stuff yeah. ready for the lunches, getting stuff ready for the dinners, Some and then of they them. they will be washing the floors. I saw this happen. Scrubbing the floors at midnight. And then at 4.30, 5 a.m., they're waking up to go back yeah. to make sure that breakfast is starting, you know, the... And, and start the prep for, for everything. And then they, you know, yeah. So dang hard. And, and the, so you're not going to hear me complain about the lack of food or I'd rather have this, that, or the other because these guys are awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. And they have such they don't pride get paid for in it. Their, their work and it totally shows. <laughs> and it tells it as they should. Like exactly. they do they do a, a stand up job. Stand up job. And everyone that I have talked to that had something 
um, to say about the event. They all just talked about the, the quality and the level and just the surprise um, benefit of having food, not just for breakfast and dinner, which is also astonishing, um, but also the fact that, yeah, they also run lunch service as well. So, so yeah. um, I, I, I can't say enough about our, our kitchen crew. They, they are just amazing. Um, Travis, um, Pooh Bear, and Jane, um, uh, Christopher uh, helping out, my son, uh, Price helping out, and um, let's see, we had uh, ca Cackles in there, in there uh, Heather as well. Uh, slinging, uh, slinging cash at the cash register. Uh, everybody chopping up things, and you know, we 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 really tried to, really hard to have everything run like a well-oiled machine and processing things and getting stuff prepped. That's easy, but it's still a hell of a lot of work. And um, our team rocks the crap out of it. So thank you guys. Thank you guys yep. so much. Absolutely. And a special thank you from me, Pooh Bear, for feeding me during lunch while I was falling asleep. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a picture out there of, of you passed out out there at the, the camp or at the fire sitting up. <laughs> Taking a couple of winks while, between the feed and the wood. <laughs> oh, that was, that was more than a couple of winks. We were all, all, all making fun of you. I'll just go ahead and tell you. <laughs> That's all right. I got shoulders. I can handle it. <laughs> uh, you did have the fire going real good before you before you dozed off, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why you dozed off. You got good and warm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it wasn't bad. So something else that uh, a lot of vendors kind of um, pride themselves on, uh, and we thoroughly enjoyed as well, just because I, I know I do, because I like gear. Um, was there a piece of new gear or old gear that you saw? Uh, I know you guys talked about um, Majestic Hammocks uh, and their hammocks, and I, I'll kind of chime into that too. Um, I, I, I told Paul the same thing that I said about Majestic Hammock as I did about my Autumn Outdoor Gear uh, Juniper Hammock. Uh, it was more comfortable than it should have been. It was more comfortable yes. than just – your traditional gathered in hammock. Um, I, I could put my finger yeah, on it. Don't but understand it was, the... it was definitely a, a great lay. What, was there anything, any other piece of piece of gear that you saw yes. that uh, you really yes. wanted, uh, whether it be new yes. or old or anything along those lines? Yes. I know what yours is. Paul. And I don't care. If, I, I don't care if he don't make any others. He has <laughs> to make me another one. Calvin Fenton, oh. Yobo gear. Kristen Zook, both of y'all, I know y'all listen to this, so I don't care if y'all make anybody else one, I want one of the ultralight crickets. The four That pounder. damn thing was just it insane. Was... Insane. Nuts. Yeah. I, I so, picked yeah. it up and I was you like, gotta make... wow. I mean, I, I don't care if you make another one to get, you know, to, to sell me, or if I get that prototype. If you don't want to make another one. But I, want I, think, I think it's funny. Like Cal was just like, eh, I don't know if anybody likes it. They probably won't like it. It's probably just like, ah, eh. but, but man, there was a lot, there was a lot of talk about that. Uh, the ultralight cricket stand. I mean, as if the, the cricket itself wasn't light enough. I mean, you got a freaking carbon fiber, four pound. I don't even know if it was four pound. I know Calvin said it was four pounds. It but, didn't seem like I it mean, did it. No, you can take one finger and put on the, the, the little guy line going across the, the top mm -hmm. and just pick it off with one finger. I mean, it was nuts. Yeah, nuts. they told me it was four pounds. And when I went to pick it up, you know, using two hands, I'm like, there, there's no way this is four pounds. No, no. I, I don't think it was. I think he was weighing the bag, and I, I don't know what all he was weighing. He might have been picking up backpacks heavier than that. <laughs> Right. Yeah, he might have he might have had a hammock on it when he waited or something. Gin Ginger had her her paw or her tail on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But yeah, that's the the majestic hammock. Is a hammock that I'm gonna be getting here soon, and then I'm gonna bug Kristen and Cal until I get one of the uh, the the UL crickets sold to me. 
Oh, Lord. What about you, Juan? Did you see anything that kind of tickled your fancy? Well, the uh, got to say that UOBO stand was awesome. Um, at the end of the, at Sunday night, when we're all underneath the pavilion, I'm the one with the old the uh, the old fashioned turtle dog stand, an OG turtle dog at that. Oh, just man. so you know, the turtle dog stand <laughs> so, is yeah, a great that, stand. That it really is. Yeah, it's got a smaller footprint than the Yobo stand, but that Yobo stand is hard to beat, yeah. especially that yeah. four pounder. What about you, Britt? Yeah. Other than that, I think it's uh, the underquilt from Adam that I got, his prototype. So I bought that off of him. So that was pretty good. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, I mean, I bought mine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we were already talking about Majestic. Oh, okay. So, okay. All right. So you uh, so you bought a Majestic. I, like, I laid in it. Yeah, I bought a Majestic Hammock and laid in it that, uh, that night. Uh, Is the Majestic Hammock like, going down. to replace the uh, big green monster that I made for you? Um, it, uh, it's, it is given quite a run for its money. I, I'm going to say it probably is going to replace the big oh, green monster. Hey, the, the big green monster has been, uh, a, a, a long stay. It has, it has had a pretty good staying power. That's for sure. Uh, Phoenix special <laughs> right there. Um, but, uh. Yeah, I mean, it's still comfortable. Like, I think the best thing is that I, I really like the Big Green Monster at a time for just being, like, the hang up hang up and, like, chill hammock. Right. And I didn't have to have under my tarp and stuff like that. Like, the napping hammock, if you will. Um, and so it, it may end up going back, uh, back to that uh, honored place. Um, so are so you going cool. to sell your uh, no, XLC? Um, I'm, pr I'm probably going to right now. I, I mean, I, I do like having a couple extra pieces. Um, certainly I'm not, I'm not starting my own. Um, I, I like having like a few extra ball. pieces of gear too. Just <laughs> yeah, a few yeah, extra yeah, nice. You, you get the few extra pieces you could outfit, you know, the first handful hundred people <laughs> that show up at hang on on your own. But, um, well, yeah, you I, uh, as well. Right, right, right. Well, I think, but I, I think between Paul and him, if they would be able to lend out all their stuff, they might be able to cover half the people that showed up to hang on. So, so funny story uh, along that line. Certainly, certainly, everybody that showed AJ, up to hang con in a tent that was kind of yes, curious. AJ, every, AJ by himself probably could have outfitted every person that was in a tent. At HangCon this year, yeah. not, not with quilts. My, my quilt collection is not is okay, not, maybe not white quilts. to where it. Yeah, my that's, wife will that's, be. that's my but, my uh, slack for my pocketbook, really. <laughs> uh, but funny story, and I, I can share this now that uh, because by the time this is released, the, his video will have already released. But so Trip Smith, who uh, is a good friend of ours uh, and runs uh, an event called Rockadoc, he he returned to HangCon this year, uh, and. He, he may have forgotten a couple of, of pretty essential things. Uh, so Tripp did not bring his top quilt or his under quilt. Ooh. And what in the world? He, Tripp? he didn't, he didn't tell anybody. I just found out this, but like uh, I, I got a special preview of his video. I didn't figure this out until I watched his video. He slept out on Thursday night, which was not a warm night. It was a, it was, was not a warm, warm night at all. Oh, that was it was, was a chilly yeah, night. It yeah. was either Wednesday or Thursday. Either way, like Friday was the warm night. Tuesday or Wednesday and Thursday was definitely a, a one of the colder nights. He slept in his truck and he used a tarp as a blanket, a sil nylon or sil poly Whoa. tarp uh, as a blanket. And I'm just thinking to myself, dude, I had like five extra setups that I would have happily just let you right. use. He's like, yeah, I had extras. I try to get him in a hammock. I try to get him with under quilts, but he just refused because that's just the kind of guy he is. He doesn't want to put someone else out. And that's you're the reason I bring extra stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but so and that's another good thing. Like if you come to HangCon and uh, you have to forget some small things, whether they be small like a towel or kind of small like i don't know an under quilt when it's going to be 40 degrees uh you definitely have people <laughs> around that uh will happily say i got gotcha. you i got gotcha. you well and i i adding to that on uh i think it was thursday night there's a, a couple guys that um 
or from Florida, from like Fort Lauderdale or something like that, that um, had heard about the event, had only heard about it on like Monday. And they're like, well, I want to go check it out. And so they came up. They had to, one of them had to leave on like Saturday. Um, but he like didn't have some of those things. Like he's not really done a lot of hammock camping. And so he ended up buying um, one of, I think it was one of Hammock Gear's under quilts that were in the gear swap. Oh, the gear, yeah. Uh, because, you know, he was, and he was asking a lot of questions like, okay, wait, how important it is, to, is it really to have an under quilt? I see everybody talking about it. how important really. I was like, well, it's very important. If, if it's going to be in Florida, if it's going to be, you know, in the low 60s and below, it's like essential if you want to sleep and not uh, just kind of lay there and shiver you to would, some you degree. Would, it's funny because or some some form of insulation is essential. It's funny because we get asked that so much by, you know, northern guests that come right. down to Hancon and they, you know, they're under the impression that it's going to be warm and everything else down here. But yet they're the ones that have every bridge that goes over water up north always has a sign bridge may freeze before the road. Oh, yeah. There's a reason for that. <laughs> it's like uh it's called convection and airflow underneath and above makes it colder. The, the bridge, look at it as a hammock <laughs> for the road. <laughs> With the exception of one other item for their northern friends, the humidity. It will get you. Yes. 40 degrees down here is not like 40 degrees up there. No. No. Humidity humidity sucks down here in the summer or the winter time. <laughs> Both. You're either going to drown from sweat in the summertime or freeze in the winter time but from I, it. I, one one nice thing about having a, a, an underquilt is like what happened to me on Friday or not, was it Friday? Yeah, Friday night where I could not fall asleep because it was so stinking warm yeah. and muggy and i was like ah and i so i had to actually just pull the underquilt off me so that it yeah, wasn't yeah, it was vented. It, yeah huh yeah and i just moved just it to the it. side yep. well i vented it and it was still i vented it and i was like no i'm still too warm and then oh. i just had to take it all the way off Brit, yeah. your problem was that you weren't hanging out with us under the pavilion until after three after the rains when the coolness finally came in well when it well that's true when it did get cold it was but that's the other nice thing about that that it, i was i woke up and i'm like oh it's a little chilly now and i just reached reached over pulled it up and and fixed it and so i was fine after that so, <laughs> it's it's much better to have one and go oh it's warm i need to move this out of my way and not be so warm than it is to not have one and shiver right right, right. You can't do that in a tent, can you? Can't do no. that. Adjust oh. your your temperature underneath you in a no, tent. Really, I mean, because it's always cold underneath you because it's the ground. I mean, unless you're on an air pad, but then if you get warm, what are you gonna do? Go to the ground? Well, what, what happens at home? You know, you don't get off your bed and change your bed. Same with an under quilt. Right. The top quilt is what you can really, no. really move around. At home, if I get too hot in my bed, I just come into my office here and throw up a hammock on the hooks. Touche. Lord. So, is there anything else you all want to talk about? Discuss? Uh, well, I think, more... like, oh, I forgot my my piece of gear that, uh, that I, I actually, I'm thinking, I didn't actually purchase anything at Hacon this year. Don's not no, behind no, no. Like, you. you don't have to... I, I didn't. It's like, she's not saying we can see their window uh, behind you. So what you're saying there, is you're you got safe. a lot of gifts. No, no, no. I, I didn't I didn't come home with any <laughs> any uh, new pieces of gear. Uh, however, um, I, I am going to be talking with uh, Chad uh, about getting uh, a UGQ uh, top quilt. Um, uh, yeah. I, Oh, I gotta get speaking of Chad, uh, thank you, Chad, very much for the uh, scully. Wow, those scullies are awesome. Freaking warm, aren't they? Oh yeah. So I'm. I'm uh, I had it on yes. for I don't even know how long during daytime, and then I took it off and realized. No, I'm sorry. It was at nighttime. I took it off and realized how cold it actually was. I yeah. put that scully right back on. Yeah, I, I will definitely yep. be. I did the same thing. A, I think scully from UGQ here, maybe within the next week. Yeah. 
Yep, yep. It uh it was it was very, very warm. Because I had uh my original one uh was just my, my little pullover cap thing from uh R and R, which was warm. But that scully, yeah, was was next level. I've been I've been <laughs> looking at those for, my head. I, I even want to say back when I first started coming to Hankon, um I, I was looking at those because that like so UGQ used to make them uh and sell them a lot. And there was another um there was another company called Black Rock Gear, I want to say. Correct. Uh, and yes. th they made them and I was like, oh, I really, I really want one of these. I really want a, um, you know, a down, uh, cap. Uh, but unfortunately black rock gear, um, they stopped making them and I think they went out of business. And, uh, I know there was a time that UGQ wasn't making them, uh, as well, but I, I'm, I'm really happy to see. Do you know why? I, I do not. I, because Chad stopped working for them. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the he's the know. one that was in charge of making all the scullies. Oh, okay. So yeah, I think he meant, Chad I remember him back. mentioning that. I remember him mentioning that somewhere. I can't remember where he mentioned so, it. So yeah, but. I I am really excited about uh, getting. Uh, I I'm going to be getting a um uh, a top quilt uh, from UGQ and also a scully. Uh, the scullies are a good ten years in the making almost, just because I've I've always wanted one. Uh, and I'm super excited about getting a UGQ quilt as well. Uh, also something that I have been, um, my, kept my eye on for, for years. Uh, and I, I'm going to finally make that happen. So, so yeah. yeah Are really you telling me that I got there. something before you did? You did. That's you amazing. Did. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I had back, uh, back, back in the day, uh, at, I, I want to say probably at Hankon. I won a UGQ um, hood, or not a hood, but a hat, but it's like one of the fleece ones and it's kind of right. oddly shaped. It kind of look points out, looks kind of like, like I have ears a little bit, um, but those skillies are mwah, top notch, top notch. Yeah. I got to order me a uh, under quilt. I've got, I've got my top quilts. It's my under quilts that I'm slack on right yeah, now. My, my, my top quilts are, um, uh, there's definitely a gap there that uh, I, I would like to remedy uh, what between hammocks and top quilts? Uh, no that not <laughs> probably a big gap <laughs> i do not have room in my house to have the amount of under quilts to go to each one of my hammocks that would just be an insane well insane investment but uh a, a very inappropriate use of time and space so that's that's more that's more insane than the number of hammocks you uh have? if if I, how many hammocks do you have a significant amount he doesn't literally doesn't I, know or sure I have not willing somewhere. to say it wow. not willing to say it in a recorded <laughs> forum d d does don know where that list is uh, probably not He's, i don't even know if i know no where list. it is at this point i i think i tried doing it just for you paul but uh, i have no idea where it's at. i'm sure it's in google docs or something like that <laughs> the Yes, he he started counting them, but then the math teacher could not count yeah. that high. <laughs> I'm just putting a line. And not an extra one. quilt maker. I'm just putting a line over one of my yeah. uh, my lowest place value, and it's just gonna go repeating forever. Is that what it is? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, all right, we have, we have someone else for... coming in. I don't know if it's going to record them. Chino, take you off mute. You there? Hey, guys. How oh, you doing? Hey, Chino. What's up, we Chino? love you, man. The, the, <laughs> hey, I love y'all, too. The late the entry. entry. It, it may record, Chino. Um, I'm sorry? Said it may it may re, uh, be recording you. It should be. We'll see. We'll see. It should be. If not, it'll be like it a special really edition. Odd, it was like really weird that we're talking to chino and no one can tell because we say like hey chino and like laugh about something and then nothing is recorded <laughs> yeah, that would be right so so should we let yeah. him know uh, that he sorry. was all told I... um for what his job is next year since he's he's on now which one good time to hear it's it. not normally, it's, uh, normally uh, works monorail uh conductor's voice oh yeah yeah so your <laughs> oh, your role God. next year chino um 
is you will be the one to talk into the microphone for like the the raffle and and other stuff. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I've uh, after that, uh, I tell you, I love that that microphone speaker setup. Whoever brought that uh, one helped us out a lot. Yeah, he's gonna two, be back next year. I, two, I didn't have veins sticking out of my forehead. Uh, sure. You sure you want to give him a microphone? <laughs> Sorry, that's Look, my it's, wife it's, in the background. He doesn't realize we're doing a podcast. <laughs> he he is better than our our other choice, which does not need a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you, I was really impressed how how much her voice projected. <laughs> oh, she don't need a microphone to project her voice. So yeah, so that that was one no, of the, she definitely one does one of the the big I guess kind of game changer moments this year was. Um, you know, we we kind of had the the bullhorn and this that and the other, and one of our 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 uh, participants like, hey, I'm a DJ. I don't live very far from here. Let me bring you a sound system and a mic, and game changer. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, what it was was um, we had the the setup that um, um, Tammy and Jason had brought out to us, but there was apparently something wrong with it. And even Heather could not make that thing loud enough. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, he came up to me and and uh, asked me for um, asked me if I if I wanted him to help get um, see if that he could get that sounding better. And he went up and and tried it, but it did not um, want to work. And so he he was like he goes uh he goes I don't live far from here he goes I'll be right back and he left and and brought his and it was like you said game changer. Well, thanks to that microphone uh, speaker setup, it propelled me into a lot of uh, into a slight stardom. Um, I've had a ton of people come up to me and go, man, you got the voice for radio. I was like, uh, thanks. The sultry you sounded, sounds of Chino. To, to, <laughs> to me, you, it sounded like the, uh, recorded monorail voice from Disney world, which was a good thing. Oh, I, I thought you, I, <laughs> I mistook you. I thought you were about to say monotone and I was like, what? No, no. <laughs> the monorail that, that pre-recorded. So. I guess what we need to do is, do you know Spanish? Uh, sadly, I don't. Okay. By next year, you need to learn it. So that way you can say it in English and then turn around and say it in Spanish, just so it oh, all, you know, gosh. like the monorail. <laughs> then, then we need like, then we need the little xylophone noise. Like, bing, bing, boom. Yes. Hey, you know what? That sounds like a great project. I'll look up. I'll see what the monorail says. I'll try to mimic that and i'll uh download a, <laughs> that airplane uh the airplane uh ding tone <laughs> that'd be great actually um, y'all are from florida we don't go to disney a lot <laughs> actually uh Gino, Gino, uh, right. if you're gonna learn yeah, another language course. um uh there there may be a very large dutch population uh next year Ooh, yeah and uh we're, we're not talking about dutch where we're talking about le- legit dutch uh from from denmark there there may be a a very large contingent of uh uh folks from across the pond uh coming over uh and um yeah so um yeah uh from what christian and lars was saying that they were actually there was several people that wanted to come over with them when they came over this year um but they wanted to, since they had never been to HangCon, they wanted to come over and scope it out first, see what it was like and everything um, before they... To see if we were legit, you said. To see if we were legit, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. But really, to, see, to make sure that they were just as crazy as they sound on the podcast. <laughs> that could be, too. That, that very well could be. But um, from what he was saying is uh, next year there might be, what, 40, 50 of yeah. them coming over? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Well, I tell you, well, we're, we're, we are going to need a monorail from the from the airport now. <laughs> well, right. when you when you broke the news uh, in that in that last ring around, uh, oh right no, no, we no, no. Hey, left, we we haven't uh, talked we haven't about talked that news about that on the, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so that's still hush hush. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, 
<laughs> Spoiler okay. alert. Uh, yeah, yeah well, so we, just... we do have some big news, but we are not quite ready to uh, <laughs> to talk about said big news. Uh, so you're going to have to stay tuned for okay. our future episodes of the Hammock Hangers podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all right well, i'll throw out uh, all right a little teaser am i the uh, only here that listens to the podcast mouth shut? i i think i think I, so. I, I think i found maybe all 20 of the people globally that listen to our podcast i think i found them in hank on this year it was <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i still think one is our, our what? top uh oh go ahead i think one is our our biggest fan <laughs> Oh no! You can't I forget our biggest it. fan. I, I really do. Uh, uh, John John Grove is is our biggest fan. It was, oh, it was yeah. great meeting John yeah, yeah. Uh, because John is like pinpoint on every time we post an episode. Uh, he he gives us a like and uh, gives us a good morning, Paul and AJ on our YouTube. So uh, mm-hmm. yep. I, I want to give a special thank which you was to funny. John. Thank you and good morning to yeah. you as well. John, John which, always gets there before. Which I is. Do. Which is which is funny because AJ and I was sitting over in the under the pavilion one morning, uh, just talking and going over a few things. All of a sudden, he walks up, he looks at us, he goes, "Good morning, Paul and AJ." <laughs> <laughs> it was it was priceless. Oh lordy! Uh, I also kind of want to give a shout out to um, a few of the uh, YouTube uh, folks that have made videos for HankCon. Uh, if you could make it this year and you just kind of want to see uh, what it was about and different people's take. Um, uh, Random Adventures uh, 2.0 has made a video. Uh, they actually made a series of videos on different dates that uh, mm-hmm. are going to be. Uh, I think most of them have uh, been released. I think uh, I think he has one or two more that should be out um, by the time this podcast uh, is published. Uh, Rewild yep. Outdoors. Um, that's spelled R E W Y L D Outdoors. His channel uh, did a video for us as well. Uh, he also has a video on HangCon 2023, if you want to go back and watch that as well. Uh, Carla with a K uh, yep. also made us a video uh, talking about uh, just her first time experience. And uh, she has a lot of uh, kind of funny stories uh, in there. So uh, that's a, a hoot. So definitely go ahead and check in with that. Uh, I'd like to thank MacGyver from uh, coming down from New Jersey. Uh, even even though your plane was uh, delayed a little bit and uh, we got we got a, to drive over and pick you up at 1 a.m. But uh, luckily, uh, we, we got you down and uh, so glad you came down. Uh, and also, uh, Trip Smith, thank you uh, for uh, making the video that you did as well. Uh, if you know any other videos uh, or if you personally did one from HangCon 2024 and you want to let us know about it, just send us a message on Facebook or email us through our website. Uh, we would yeah. love to show your channel some us. love and uh, uh, give you a shout out uh, as well. Um, but ma- make sure you go check out those videos that I that I know. Uh, there may be more coming in the next couple of weeks as people get uh, videos edited and things along those lines. Um, but yeah, definitely check out those channels and uh, give them a like and subscribe as well. Yep. Same with UGQ. Oh yeah, UGQ. Yeah, they we, they we had us on. With them. They they were doing on site uh, podcasting, and uh, they had AJ and I on. Make sure you go give them a. a following a like and um what was it likers likers, likers is uh what what Brittany calls them <laughs> uh, yeah uh, if <laughs> even if you if you see no other video uh from ugq uh and you don't even have to watch the one with me and paul you need to go and watch the video that chad and adam from hammock gear do together that is the video you need to see oh i was it, it yeah, is hilarious yeah. that was one that i was i was rolling and I mean, my stomach was hurting the whole time. <laughs> and thank you, Chad, for sponsoring Sunday Night's Fire. Yeah, you done a special fire for them, didn't you? Was that was that the this um, no? What night was that that you uh, done the UGQ fire? That was Sunday night. Was it Sunday? Okay, I can't remember. All the days start to run together at hang on for me after a couple well, of days. If, you, if you pay attention to the fire pit each night progressively builds on the last night so that's how you know what night it is gotcha okay okay so tell you what that sunday night uh when we cleared the hall um uh, i ended up uh calling the the area the uh yobo party the yobo party up on the big pavilion 
Yeah, it was it was a Yobo stand party, and it was just really cool to see all the everybody hunker in underneath uh, as a group for several reasons. The primary was that it was going to rain, and nobody wanted their gear wet on the very last day that they're gonna, you know, for the I next one. They're up gonna in the, in the rain. I think out of all the hang cons yeah, I've gone to, there's only been one where I've had to pack up in the rain. Uh, it was. Uh, the second year that we had at, uh, which was then Sertoma, um, because we, maybe it was the first year, because we had to go the next following weekend, um, something about the, because we, I know it ended on Sunday and not the Monday, and that Sunday, it was like this cold, wet rain, and oh, it was miserable, but other years so far, in the uh, 10 years or something I've been going, it's been clear skies, so I was really glad that I could keep that kind of luck streak going right so far well, that's because we always had the rain a couple of days prior to you leaving us <laughs> good deal <laughs> good deal all right everybody that about wraps up this week's episode of the hammock hangers podcast we hope you've enjoyed hanging out with us and all of our hang con crew that was able to join us and Guys, thanks again for joining in. And most of all, thank you guys so much for what you do for HangCon and making the event what it is what it is. Uh, you guys are truly uh, uh, an essential asset to the Hammock community, and uh, we couldn't make this happen without you guys. So thank you guys for being here, and thank you guys for everything that you guys do. It's definitely my pleasure. So, thank you. And, uh, and I hope we can uh, kind of get together again soon and uh, just do some non-HangCon hammocking. That would be awesome as well. All right. So yep. before we go, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed today's episode and subscribe to our podcast for more episodes that will keep you hanging on the edge of your seat. Stay connected with us on social media to keep the hammock conversations going, share your own hammock adventures, and stay updated on all things hammock related. If you can, uh, if you're looking for us, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for the Hammock Hangers podcast. Thanks for tuning in, hangers. Until next time, may your hammocks be cozy, your views breathtaking, and your relaxation uninterrupted. Happy hanging, everybody. Mm -hmm.